Uh, let me have a little bit of this first. My name is Daniel Rosenberg. I'm um, thinking of the prospect of how fast uh, Venus Project could be implemented. And secondly, also, being a little bit flippant here in Denmark, which is where I live, and I regard it as a Hubbard kind of county, where we are very, very insulated. We are on the top of the food chain. and uh, But it, it's probably one of the best places to in Scandinavia to create a Venus Project if there were, you know, philanthropists, uh, getting together. I know this sounds like you're talking to people, but uh, how fast could this uh, be done, you, you think, if, provided that there was uh, a lot of uh, goodwill and, and, and um, good people? I'm sorry, due to these gadgets don't work too well. I still don't know what your question is. The question is, how fast can the Venus Project be made you know, real? How much work do you do? Does it depend on? I have no power at all. It's what you do. Whatever country I go to and speak, if the people do nothing, nothing will happen. The more you work, you work at it and educate people as to what the Venus Project is, the sooner you'll see it. Or if you do nothing, we'll probably kill each other. Our language, our social habits are moving towards self-destruction and environmental destruction. I don't like what I'm saying, but I just, yes, yes sir. We have a question over here. Hello, my name is Marius Budu. Um, I was wondering, you talked about uh, the current definition of sustainability where um, it just means that the people in power get to stay in power and keep the system the way it is. That's what they mean by sustainability. Sorry? That's what they mean right. by sustainability. <laughs> in order to implement um, these new cities and using the new resource-based system rather than monetary system. How do you propose to bridge the gap where you build a city that is resource-based uh, in a context that is still monetary-based? I understand. Years ago, when I first was designing this system, I asked myself, that's what thinking is, talking to yourself. I asked myself, how are we going to change all these people? They have different values, different customs, different language, different interpretations. So that's the time I joined the Ku Klux Klan in Miami. The reason I joined is to see if I can change them. So I dissolved that organization in a month and a half, alone. Then I joined the White Citizens Club. hate foreigners, all foreigners. So I joined that organization, I dissolved it in one month. Then I asked some questions in New York. What are the most backward people in the area? They said, the Arabs. I said, what makes you think they're backward? That group still believes the earth is flat. Not all Arabs, the group they were talking about. So I said, boy, if I'm going to try to change the world, I've got to change them. So I called up the lead Arab. He said, want to know whether I was an Arab? And I said, yes, I'm not an Arab. But that's to gain entry. So he said to me, you know, where was your father born? And I gave him places that he would accept. So he says, come and saw me, which means come and see me. So when I came to see him, he said to me, you believe the world's you round? I said, yes. He went, in his language, that means it can't be round. You're wrong. So he held up his hands like this, and he said, Jack, if world he round, man fall me down here. All the water he fall me down from the world. There be no ocean, nothing. Get point to his head and how smart he was. So I figured I have to get to that guy if I wish to change the world. So I gave him a rubber balloon and I rubbed it with fur and I put cornflakes in his hand and told him to hold him away from the balloon. Those of you that don't know this, if you rub a balloon, with fur or rub it fast, you generate static electricity and that'll suck the cornflakes up to the balloon. So all the cornflakes jumped out of his hand up to the balloon and his jaw hit the paper. <laughs> he said, world he magnet? I said, yes. Ah! And he explained that to all the other Arabs. In an hour and a half, they accepted the fact that the earth was round. Then I took a 
two of those Arabs to an airport. They've never seen an airplane. And they turned to Elbaz, who was their leader. They said, what, why for? They put the fan in front of the aeroplane. The fan meaning the propeller. Elbaz said, the aeroplane will go up near you because suddenly it gets hot, so they put the fan in front. <laughs> now he was using his background. There's nothing wrong with them. Nobody ever does anything wrong, by the way. They use whatever knowledge they have. If the knowledge doesn't fit reality, they suffer. So no one ever makes mistakes. The first guy that played around with nitric acid and glycerin, the building disappeared, so did the guy. And his brother-in-law wrote, never fool with that stuff. <laughs> the first guy that wanted to fly built two sets of wings, three feet on each side. He jumped off the Eiffel Tower and he died. And his brother-in-law wrote, make wings larger next time. <laughs> Where do you think it comes from? No one ever makes a mistake. How are they going to know? Yes. I was just wondering, when you see your vision of the future, um, it made me think about, because the lack of presence of police and army and so on in prisons... It Only made me, during the transition. Yes, yes. But it made me think about what William Burroughs once wrote. He, he wrote that a true police state doesn't need any police, because people are policing themselves. Is that what, what you are, are thinking about? Well, I, I don't quite understand the question. Is, I'm asking, is this the, you know, the, the fulfillment of a uh, no. total police state? No, the city that I show you here is transitional. There's no final cities. Everything I make and build, I always change next month, next year. There's no final frontiers. And I, everything I work on is all transitional. So everything you saw on that screen is not where the future is going to be. If they use the city I design, the kids of the future, that would be a straitjacket to them. They'll design their own cities. See, but if you make a statue of fresco and put it there and say he designed the city, you hold people back. There are no great men in the future. There are no beauty contests. There's nothing like that in the future. Because everybody works on the world to make it better, and they're all received as friends. There's nobody out there to take anything away from you. But how adaptable is your vision of the future oh, with human nature? Very good. Because, you know, you said everybody will be f uh, functional uh, uh, inhabitants in the city. Uh, in the context. But what about people who doesn't want to okay. take part, who doesn't want to participate? Very in good. This? The countries that don't want to join, let's say many countries join, but some won't join this universal world project. This is true. So, but they're on their own. They don't get the advantages of a cooperative group. So if, a, if there's a group like the Amish people, they want to live their own group, group you know, their own lifestyle. They don't want to live in our city. They want to live out in the country with their own projects. Take it, we'll put up the buildings for them, design the buildings for them, design the food production system for them if they want us to. But we don't control them. Now, if they say, we don't like your materials, we want wood, we like wood, and if it catches fire, it's your problem. Do you understand? Yeah. If, you want, if you want to go the old way, if you don't want to take everything we design in buildings, your mattresses will be inflated with CO2 gas. So if you happen to smoke and drop a cigarette on, it puts it out. But if you want to go ahead the old way, that's up to you. You're responsible for it. But you don't live in our cities. Our cities have no fire engines. No police, no prisons, because everything designed in the city is fireproof. And you don't have signs, drive carefully, school district, 15 miles an hour. The power output in that region to your car is 15 miles an hour. So you can step on the gas all you want to, all your car does is 15 miles an hour. Then there are signs today that say, drive carefully, school children crossing. Well. We have a pavement that looks like two cones. When the kid presses the button to cross the street, the pavement turns up like that, so no car can hit it yet. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Not a sign, be nice, be kind, be careful. <laughs> no, you're building in the city system.